Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Open your Bibles with me this morning to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The thief cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the dividing point of the Bible right there. Amen. So you're on one side or the other of that divide. Now, in the fourth chapter of the book of Thessalonians, and um, praise God. Look at the sixth verse. No man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified, for God hath not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, well, you see, you, you always come back to love. But as touching Brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia, but you be, uh, we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more in love. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business, to work with your own hands as we commended you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing. You may have lack of nothing. Well, that you may have lack of nothing. nothing. Praise God. That means spirit, soul, and body. Yes. Now, but I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or those that have passed on, that have departed, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now, sorrow not, that word sorrow is the Greek word, lapeo, which is grief. Let me read it to you from the classic Amplified. Now also we would not have you ignorant, brethren, about those who fall asleep in death that you may not grieve for them as the rest do who have no hope beyond the grave. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we believe that, right? Yes. Oh yeah, we believe that. Yes. Glory, oh yes. yes, I don't believe that. I know that. Yes. That's in my knower. Yes. And I just know that I, I know that I, I know that I know that I know that I know what I know that I know that I, that I know. I know. Glory to God. I know. I know him. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We declare to you by the Lord's own word that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons and with a shout of an archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Then we, the living ones who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always through the eternity of the eternities we shall be with the Lord. Therefore comfort and encourage one another with these words. Amen. Grief has no place in our lives. Amen. Grief, as we talked about last night, can bring sickness and disease because grief is the companion of death. But now, I, I really like the way the apostle put this. 
that those that have fallen asleep, but then there's people come up and said, well, you know, they're in the sleep of death and they're just asleep somewhere. Don't take one scripture. Go, the, you know, take, take the body of the word of God and you know exactly what happens. To be absent, I mean, the same apostle said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and you're not asleep when you get there. <laughs> Let me show you just how easy that is. To be absent from the body Amen. that's just how easy it is. Come on, get up. That coat is dead as a sack of rocks. Why? I'm not in it. It has no life in it. I am the life of that coat. Amen. 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 Now, uh, would you assist me, please? Would you pick my body up and put it in the grave? <laughs> See, I can't do it. I'm gone. So it, he put it, now he puts it in the grave and he puts it up for me because I'm coming back after it. But right now, thank you, sir. Right now, I am the life of this coat because this coat was made for me. That illustration should help. But Brother Copeland, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, you probably don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Uncle Bobo. Okay, so you don't know. Trust God. Yes. You don't know what happened in that last second or two. There are testimonies now of that. I'm thinking about one testimony where this woman kept witnessing to her husband. She kept talking to him and he just laughed her off. Wouldn't have anything to do with it. Just wouldn't have anything to do with it. And she just kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on. I saw it on the 700 Club. And thank God for Pat Robertson and Gordon and the, and the 700 Club. Glory to God friends for a long, long time. And uh, <laughs> so, and, and boy, I, I, t I tell you what, he just had a, a, a heart attack that was a, something and, and just died in his pickup. Well, he stepped out of his body. Yeah. And he went, he went through some pretty rough places. But the prayers of his wife and, the, and the, the witnessing she had done to him, those, those things were inside of him. They were inside his spirit, see? And he went through, when he left his body, he went through some pretty rough places there, but, but God just straightened him out and gave him his choice. Wow. You can go back, heal, and finish working for me, or you can just come on. No, he said, I, I, I'd rather go back and make up for, for how I messed up before. Amen. Well, what if he had chosen to go on? She would have thought he died and went to hell because she, he never did in front of her confess that Jesus was Lord. Now, I wanted that to get through because you're right. You don't know. But we do know. Yes. 
that God is not only a just God, he is a very merciful God. Amen. Praise God. So grief is a killer. And I'm speaking to someone online that you've been grieving. I'm telling you, stop it right now. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind the spirit of grief. I bind the spirit of death. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke death this morning. I rebuke the spirit of death. I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I, hey. Now you leave. And I plead the blood. Now, wait a minute. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> I, I'm particularly us Holy Ghost people. I mean, we're just, we just plead the blood a lot. But, uh, well, yeah, you know, Mama did that. And, and Grandma did that. And I do it. Well, well, what did you do when you did that? That's a legal term. I plead my case. I plead my case according to the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. I, even I, am he who blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake. And I'll not remember them anymore. Now, there's some good news this morning. And that came up in front of me one day and I said, Lord, no, 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 no. You did that for my sake, not your sake. No. I mean, he snapped back at me. He said, I did it for my sake. I don't get it. And, and he said, do you like to remember bad things about your children? I said, no, I don't. I forgive my children. I and I've taught them that and that let, once you, you come to me with this or and so forth, I don't bring it up anymore. I don't come back at you anymore. Because in this case, I do my best to be a father like the Father God. And once you confess that sin, it's gone and don't bring it back up to him either. That's rude. Because he said it in the first chapter of First John, Walk in the light as he is in the light and his blood cleanses you from all sin. Amen. So I plead the blood. That's right. And we've overcome the spirit of grief. We've overcome the devil. We've overcome principalities and powers. We've overcome the rulers of the darkness of this world. We've overcome wicked spirits in the heavenly places. By the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. I plead the blood. What have I done? I have pled the blood of the covenants. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood and just throw the, uh, both covenants, both blood covenants right in that devil's face. I plead the blood. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And that there's healing in that. Oh, there's there's, there's healing and joy in knowing, knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. Knowing what belongs to you. Healing belongs to you. Healing belongs to me. First words count. All Bible scholars agree that the first occurrence of a word in the Bible, then it carries that all the way throughout both covenants. Genesis 6, 3, that's, that's right at the beginning. The God himself said, I, I'm paraphrased, I'm not going to put up with men living the, so long anymore. So their normal lifespan will be 120 years. So now, as you flow down through the Bible and, and you come to the book of Leviticus and it begins to talk about foods that human beings should not eat, well, why? Because 
he's, he's setting you up to live healthy and without sickness or disease for 120 years. Now, isn't it amazing that medical science without the Bible <laughs> has come to the conclusion that without sickness and disease, the human body should live 120 years. <laughs> well, everybody sooner or later, whether you like it or not, will catch up with the Bible. Science, a little by little, you know, finally catch up with the Bible. That book is right. And the answers of, of, of human life are, are in it. But it has to be spiritually discerned. It is a code book. And it's received by the spirit of man, not the mind of man. Amen. And divine healing is a spiritual thing. And it spills over into natural healing. I've given you my testimony. You know, about that pacemaker. I said, no, Lord, I'll just get this. But no, he said, receive the pacemaker by faith. So I did that. And of course they went in there, you know, and checked and all to see if I needed some kind of a stent. No, I didn't need a stent. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But I already, I already had obligated myself and covenanted with God to live 120 years. The covenant was in place. When you find the word glory, the first reference to glory in the Bible was finance. Just go check it out and find it. He has gotten all this glory Amen. I'm not going to do your homework. I'm not going to, I'll just tell you it is in the first covenant. <laughs> Amen. And it had to do with a certain man and, and uh, his wife was a, uh, and, uh, and I'm not as far as I'm going to go with you. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. So now then, so deal with the spirit of grief. Yes. I will not tolerate that in my life. I won't tolerate it, but we do not tolerate it at EMIC. Now then, that doesn't mean that we don't minister to people, members of the, of the church uh, uh, in a time when they need you. Amen. Amen. But more than once, I've used that scripture right there. I'm, I'm thinking about one particular woman and um, her husband, a close friend. And, and he was frankly not old enough to die. And, and it was sudden. And so, and I, and I had to fly in to, to be a part of his home going service. I don't like funerals. They're home going service, home going celebrations. Now we go and we spend a lot of time, a lot, Christians spend a lot of time, um, you know, getting people to heaven. And then when one of them goes, crying, bawling, squall, grief. <laughs> now you can, you can obviously see where that comes from. It certainly didn't come from God. Do you know what the Bible says about it? He takes pleasure in the homecoming of his saints. Well, the Bible says, says death. He takes pleasure in the death of his saints. Well, why? Listen, this earth is a rotten place to live. <laughs> At the very best, it's a bummer. <laughs> so begin to think instead of, be, now control your thinking. Say this, my mind, my mind is, my mind. is my, mind. my mind. I think, I think what, I to think. what I choose to think. And I choose to think, I choose to think 
according to God's Word. I think His thoughts after Him. Glory to God. So begin to think life thoughts instead of grief thoughts. Our friend Paul had had heart issues and it was affecting so much of his life. And I'm like, okay, we were like just thinking we'd watch from home, but Holy Spirit said, you go up there, you do a corresponding action. I want you to stand for them. And I said, okay. And then I was like in excruciating pain for a while now. And it's been like horrible. I've been having trouble finding a play, way to sit, sit. And I'm like, I know I'm healed. And then Brother Copeland, again, I like he helped correct me because during all this crazy stuff they've been putting us through, I've been really angry <laughs> and I got out of my love walk. And so this morning I was repenting and going, okay, I forgive. And then Brother Copeland's calling things out. And first I get my back. And I was like, woohoo! I'm that's how Jesus works. He's like getting the backs, he's getting the hearts, he's getting the minds, and he's like, you wanna stand in, you're gonna get a, a double dose. So then he calls the kidneys out. And it's been kind of a thing that I've just been standing in, you know, faith and the healing, and I was like, okay, corresponding action. And he called it out and I felt that pop that he talked about. Every bit of pain on that side is gone. Somebody just got healed right over the top of the right kidney. Praise God, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. If it was somebody in here, stand up. Yeah! <laughs> God's so good. Like you come here, you stand for your friends, you stand for you know your fellow body of Christ, and God's like, I want my whole body healed. You're not just gonna be standing there and then suffering yourself. I'm, how about that? How about that? You want that healing? And I'm like, I want that healing. <laughs> Thank you, God. So I took it and like, as he said it, and now that pain is gone. It's gone. Like I, I could barely bend over, honestly, for the last week or so. I was just like, ah this hurts so much. And now it's like gone and it's moved, just like you said, to the other side. And it's feeling like so much better. Like, I just feel like, ah, thank you, Jesus. So anybody, if you've got friends that are suffering or if you've got friends that need help, you can stand for them. And guess what? God's gonna get you too. It's all like, He's that good. He's that big. He's so good. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. The threat of sickness and fear may be all around you. However, to the believer, the Word of God is full of promises to make you victorious over every attack of the enemy. Healing and wholeness are yours in Christ Jesus. In Faith to be Made Whole, Kenneth Copeland explains that it really is God's will for you to be healed. This series, available on MP3 or DVD, walks you through Jesus' healing ministry to discover the unchanging will of God for healing, deliverance, and wholeness. It is God's unconditional love for you that holds the power to propel your spirit, soul, and body into wholeness and your life to a place of victory. God's promise of health is true for you, and God never breaks His promises. Find out how to believe and trust in God's love for you and have faith to be made whole. The key ingredient to wholeness of spirit, soul, and body is your faith. 
Request your free copy of Faith to be Made Whole, available on DVD or MP3, and discover this number one key to answered prayer. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Spencer Nordyke. I'm an instructor at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. And one of the courses I teach is Foundations of Faith. Brother Copeland's primary calling from the Lord is to teach and preach faith. He's taught us about what faith is, how faith comes, how it works, and how it's released. This week on The Believer's Voice of Victory, we're going to Healing School, a special healing service from the Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign. If you're believing for your healing, or if you're standing on the Word for someone who needs a healing, continue in the Word with us all week. Let the Word of God go into your eyes and ears. It'll get down into your heart until it comes out of your mouth in faith. The Branson Victory Campaign is coming up Thursday, April 7th through Saturday, April 9th in Branson, Missouri. We'll be having our healing school service that Saturday morning. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have said that Jesus always comes to healing school, so come expecting to receive from Him. I encourage you to be there for the whole meeting. Brother Copeland and Jerry Savell will be there preaching the Word of God. And as you spend that time in the Word, begin to build your faith to receive your healing. The Branson Victory Campaign is free to attend, so register today at kcm.org slash events. Thank you for joining us today. This is Spencer Nordyke, and I want to remind you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory. In 2022, make time to receive God's Word and direction for your life. Join Kenneth Copeland at these upcoming KCM events. April 7 through 9 for the Branson Victory Campaign in Missouri. May 12 through 14 for the Sacramento Victory Campaign in California. May 26 through 28, join us for the first ever Knoxville Victory Campaign in Tennessee. June 9 through 11, don't miss another first, the Fargo Victory Campaign in North Dakota. And August 1 through 6, bring your whole family to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. Come expecting to fill up on the meat of God's Word at our annual hometown meeting. KCM events are free to attend. Don't miss out on the opportunity to sow God's Word into your life. Go to kcm.org events for more information and we'll see you there.